I remember when I was in college, two men that invested their lives spiritually in me would always talk about believing God for promises that God had given to them. And they would pray over those promises and, and believe that God was going to use them to touch nations. In Hebrews 6, it talks about that God had said to Abraham that I will bless you and I will multiply you. And that by these two unchangeable things, the promise and the oath, that we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. And then it says we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. This promise that he made to Abraham, he's still fulfilling, and he's fulfilling it through the heirs of that promise. When we are in Christ, we are the seed of Abraham. We are heirs according to the promise. When do we need a promise? Well, when we don't see it happening. That's when we're discouraged. We say, God, would you really use my life? And he says, listen, I have promised this. This is the unchanging nature of my purpose to bless you with the righteousness of Christ and to multiply you, to give you spiritual descendants. In Isaiah chapter 55, God gives an unbelievable expression of this idea that the promise that he made to Abraham is for every believer. It starts out with this general invitation, come all you who are thirsty. And then it says, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. And then he says, why are you spending money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? And it's an admonition. Why are you spending your time and energy on, on meaningless things, giving yourselves to things that will not last? And so this, this beginning of this whole chapter is about this invitation to come and to give your life to what will last forever. The prophet says, the Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Listen to me, listen that your soul may live. There's another verse in Psalm 25, 14, that it says the friendship of the Lord is for those who seek him and he makes his covenant known to them. Another translation of the Bible says that God confides in those who fear him. It's as though God asks us, come close to me. I'm gonna to whisper to you. He says, I wanna use you. I wanna make my covenant known to you. I wanna make this promise yours. And it's as though he whispers like a friend confiding one to another. God says that I will make an everlasting covenant with you my unfailing kindnesses promised to David. And so here in Isaiah 55, 5, he tells us exactly what this promise will be. He says, it will be just like that agreement I made with David. But for you, he says, surely you will summon nations you know not. And nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, for he has endowed you with splendor. So the promise there that we get to be involved with is God saying to the believer, to anyone that will come to him, he says, I'll make the same kind of agreement I made with David with you. Surely you will summon nations you know not. In Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, he moves into this thought that he says, as certain as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing the matter for which I sent it. He's talking about the promise that he just made, that I will make an everlasting covenant with you. This is the, the word that God has spoken that is not going to return to him without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent.
Now you might think, well, I'm never even going to leave the little area where I'm living right now, or I'm just here in this city or on this campus. But you know, you could touch nations through the person that is sitting across the coffee table from you. Maybe it's someone that doesn't know Christ and you're telling them the good news about Jesus and, and they come to know him. And then they begin to get a vision, God use me. It's as though your life goes right through that person and they may be the one that takes us to the next generation or takes us out to touch the world. that my life could impact him, that he or she could take this to the ends of the earth and God's glory would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. That's what he wants to do. That's how he wants to use us. That's how he invites us to be involved with the unchanging nature of his purpose. He's inviting us to come to him He's telling us to listen to him, that he will make the same kind of promise to us that he made to David. And then he says that he will use us to summon nations we know not. And he says, this is beyond what you could think or imagine. My ways are not your ways. And then he says, now go out. Now go out in joy and watch what I'll do. You want purpose for your life? That's what God's saying. Enter into the unchanging nature of my purpose. This river that goes from Genesis to Revelation, this promise I've made to Abraham, I will use you to summon nations. And that around heaven's throne will be people from every nation, tribe, and language group worshiping. And my life will be involved with God accomplishing that purpose. <laughs>